Okay, let's go live with James Medic speaking, trainingsites.io. If you're a teacher, if you're a coach, Google's got some competition for you. And I want to share one of the new things that I kind of ran into for the second time on the Google Labs experiments. And it's something that if you're a coach, a speaker, someone who's teaching, anyone who's in an education business, you better keep your eyes open because this is coming quickly. It's called Google Portraits, and it's not about looking good. We're going to go over that today. And the reason I came up against this again, uh, one specific one is last week, or maybe on the weekend, I did a video about uh, Grok 4.0 uh, from the X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and basically, they launched these X companions. And this was an avatar that emotionally and verbally interacted with you. And this was available on X. And I was thinking about it. Well, maybe, you know, what's going to happen if that's a teacher or someone who's an expert? And lo and behold, when I went to go back, and I always keep an eye on Google Experiments. I'll show it to you right now just so that you uh, that you have the interface here. This is available at labs up here at the top, labs.google forward slash experiments. And they always have a bunch of these experiments going on. And these are basically just that. It's like they throw the stuff up into the air these different ideas and just see what sticks, what doesn't stick. They get feedback from people who are using them uh, and then they either roll them out or they don't. Now I go and check this on a regular basis and I'll tell you why actually in one of the next little pieces here. But the point is they have some really cool tools here. Um, and I will mention this just right now. This is why Google experiments is why I think Google will is better placed or will win the AI kind of space in people's minds. The first, the, here's the big thing. When I go to Google Labs and I go to the experiments, these are all things that I can use right away in my personal life, in my business life, but it's an interface into using an AI tool. If I use Claude, if I use uh, ChatGPT, they have some really great tools, but the interface or the application of the AI is something I have to figure out. When I go to Google experiments like this, these are all real life experiments on stuff that, wow, I'd like to use this today. I don't have to build it. It's something that's here and ready to go. And the one, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of these and some other ones because they're really important to teaching and coaching and the education space. But on this one here, I wanted to pull up, this one was called Portraits. And again, it has nothing to do with looking good. It has nothing to do with creating your avatar and making sure that, you know, that you can pick an anime version or, you know, a cartoon version or whatever, or a lifelike version of it. This one, when I looked at it again, it said, now just pay attention to this. This is really important. Expert knowledge delivered by AI coaches starting with a personalized AI powered coaching experience built alongside, and they had two examples here. One was uh, Kim Scott and another one was a storytelling expert, Matt Dix. So here we go. We've got a situation now where it's not a grok companion, which they used for adult companions in the examples that I saw, but we now have subject matter experts who are available verbally and an AI powered avatar that we can work with anytime we want at any place about any domain knowledge that they particular have. This is a big competitor now for anyone who is in the course business, anyone is who is in the education space and they think that they can't be replaced. Think of it right now. You have some of these top people who are live AI coaches and available. This fundamentally changes everything again, and it's something that you have to pay attention to because it is a big change for all of us. So how does that work? What are we gonna you know, kind of work with this? Where is it gonna all fit in? Let's take a look uh, and see what happens. I'm gonna bring up my trusty mind map now because that's what I love doing, and we'll kind of think about it here. So you know, what is it? We've got a voice and avatar-based AI coaching tool, and they're real life experts that are available in there. Now, they don't have, lots of them at this point, but they're adding them. And again, it's not difficult for the agents or the infrastructure to be trained on the expert or the domain knowledge of the expert. So what does it mean for us? It means that the future of coaching and courses is now getting very blurred, right? If you need to learn something, do you take a course 
Do you buy access time with an expert coach or do you have the digital one in front of you anytime that you want? Um, if you are going to be anyone who is a digital coach or an AI coach or even a real coach, the real thing you have to work on now is how can I become the trusted authority? How can I gain rapport or have the style and the delivery method that someone relates to and that they understand and that you've built up that rapport with them? That kind of uh, trusted authority now is the big job for real life coaches and teachers and people who are trying, you know, trying to to uh, either sell or create traditional courses. That whole positioning thing is changing again because we've got course and digital live interactive AI coach answering questions. Uh, even things like practice sessions and the implementation and apl application of things. Uh, if you are with your AI coach, the portrait that you happen to be working with, you're going to be able to interact with them verbally. And the verbal part is also emotionally uh, or uh, it's multimodal in the sense that it will actually have the emotive capabilities of the coach that's working with you. It's not you pick a voice, for example, and it's some monotone, inauthentic voice. These are authentic conversations with trained experts that just happen to be an AI avatar. So anytime you're practicing thing as a student, you're in a position now where if there's scenarios or role playing or questions that go back and forth with Peeled, it's like, hey, how do I do this? Or give me an example. Or why don't you show me how you're doing it? And I'll give you critique or feedback on it. And this whole kind of space for us is if we're in the education space and we want to build an education business, this teaches, you know, changes what our community is about, right? We now have a situation where if you have a community and a bunch of static courses, or do you have maybe some frameworks live teaching for the application of your frameworks, but you also have your virtual AI portrait that is a subject matter expert in one part of what you're teaching. Is it the marketing part of your education business? Is it the technical part? Is it the strategic part? You can have these AI agents or experts in their field talking about the part that is important to them in your community. But it's you that organizes and puts that community together and make sure that that ecosystem is hopefully where your learners and or your customers are going to be. So this is a whole new format of a traditional course or membership site. It's basically your housing AI avatars, not static content anymore. And the other thing that's kind of neat that I've been thinking about this is that I'm looking at and I'm going, okay, cool. What else can I do with that? Well, if you had, they showed some examples of, of uh, avatars that they had, these portraits are calling them. What about if you created your own portrait and you licensed it? So instead of just having yourself on your community, you could basically say, hey, you want me on your site or in your business? Here's my portrait. Here's what I'm trained on. Here's my expertise. If you want to add it to your site or to your community or to your curriculum or the place that you're actually teaching, there it is. Um, you know, I'm going to charge you this much a month or this much uh, a unit or whatever it happens to be. So there's some pretty interesting things about what does this portrait from Google Labs mean to me? Uh, and, it, you know, what do we have to do at this point? How are we going to protect ourselves? Um, there's a couple things that I think we have to do. And I'm going to actually, we'll do this first. Uh, I want to go back uh, and talk on one kind of piece on this. Um, when I was looking at how long this actually takes to come out. Uh, the research that I did was, you know, how long will it be here? When I took some original looks at this, I asked ChatGPT and I asked Jim and I said, um, what is the average time between uh, an experiment and Google Labs becomes public and it actually becomes available for regular people? And on average, it was three to 12 months. So. Lab experiment starts to available. And I'm talking about the alpha and the beta is in there, but it's something that, you know, kind of comes available. I'll give you a simple example of that. Um, one of the ones that I did in January, February, like three or four months ago, was about uh, Flash 2.0, which was multimodal. 
Now, all of the uh, large language model AI tools have multimodal in it. That was four months ago. So we got three to 12 months is kind of the runtime on how quickly it goes from an experiment in the labs to out in the wild. Notebook LM took six months. If you're doing anything that has to do with organizing your knowledge, being able to interact with it, being able to study with it and using it as a teaching uh, tool, creating podcasts with it, We've got a whole bunch of videos on these ones, six months from the time it kind of came out into the experiment part until it was available as something that you could actually go and use. Gemini, which used to be Bard, took nine to 12 months. Now here's the part that is uh, interesting, and this is why I'm covering this one today. Um, Portraits was announced in July of 2024. So let me just type, fix a typo here. So we have, this was done, this was done 12 months ago. So how long is this going to take before it becomes out in the wild and how quickly is it going to be before we have experts that are being added as quickly as possible and the people obviously that are going to be added are the experts that are doing ted talks that are uh, you know authors people who have domain knowledge and experience that they want to share that are already you know famous or uh, have some kind of following so that's going to come out soon and that's going to cause a problem for us if we're trying to compete with them or teach against them or if we're plagiarizing what they're doing or creatively plagiarizing or not having anything that is unique to ourselves in terms of the frameworks and the time, the type or the style of which we actually deliver content. So, you know, we're in a situation right now. So what do we need to do? How do we keep ahead? How do we make sure that we can monetize our and uh, uh, build our education business? I think we have to work really, really hard. And this is what I'm doing on the frameworks that I'm actually creating. Uh, at trainingsites.io forward slash join, the link is right there uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, I've been building out these recipes and these frameworks as fast as I can, all about starting, building, and growing an education business. So the framework is the part that I think we have to really focus on. And the framework is about the application of AI to the uh, using the framework to have a specific outcome. So it's not about content. It's about frameworks and AI. We've got a situation now where if you don't have those, you're going to be competing directly with some other AI coach that is available everywhere from Google Portrait. So having that done in framework is important. The other thing is I think we have to really get modular or chunky on what it is that we're actually recording and or writing. None of this long, big stuff. We want to be able to have multiple chunks of specific answers to specific questions, whether they be ideas or strategies, but just try and chunk everything down and keep it down to the smallest size where it's question and answer so that they can be put together and be used by, in the future, some of these portraits. Um, and then also, you know, think about how am I going to deliver stuff? If I'm going to have an AR avatar or a portrait that is someone that is supposed to be me, I better know who I am, what I'm going to be like, what my style is, because at the end of the day, some people are going to like the way I present things. Some people are going to go, oh my God, that's not for me. But if you're just trying to be middle of the road and pleasing everyone, you're going to be pleasing no one. Be yourself, be authentic, but just understand that your style is also going to be part of this particular tool that's coming out of the labs. Um, you know, if you're thinking about this a little bit further and you're wondering, okay, I understand this. I get it, James. There's going to be someone I'm going to compete against. Who am I actually competing against? Am I competing against the avatar? Am I competing against the Google portrait? No, think of it from the perspective of the student or the person that is actually taking your course that they paid for. Um, are you an expert that is available one-to-one, -one, 24 hours a day? So you have to compete against an AI coach that is always available at any time, and it's one-to-one. -one. It's not one-to-many. You know, are your doors open for your coaching programs 24 hours a day? Can someone just basically click a button and are you available? No, they're not. But that's what the students and your customers are going to be able to see. 
The learning is conversational with these. These are verbal and avatars that are ones that represent you. So you've got a situation now where you've got a conversational learning that is just in time on demand. Not just in case content courses, but just in time for that small question or answer or test or practice that is available not by going and visiting a course, but by having up or bringing your portrait or making it available to you, whether it's on your smartphone or in your desktop on your browser. And you know, the real currency here is the trust and credibility. This is why I think YouTube is so important for everyone to be able to get out and build your audience. Again, someone that knows, likes, and trusts you, that they've seen you, that they're comfortable with you. You've got to get out and build that audience now so that the trust and credibility that you have when you either are dealing with an AR avatar or you're creating your own, these poor, um, uh, pardon me, these, uh, these uh, new AI tools from Google, these portraits, you know, you got to make sure that you're there. That's the money. That's the currency. And the other part here that, you know, just to think about that is in the past, it was like practice sessions were limited, right? You know, it's like book a time for some practice sessions. If you think of anyone that's developing anything, any kind of skill, it's often like, you know, you go to practice, you go to practice, you go and practice things and you have a set time each week. Now, that is totally scalable. These practice sessions are available anytime. So if you do know a particular skill and you want to practice it and you have a particular time you want to practice it, you're not waiting to get in front of your coach. Your coach is there with you whenever that you need it. And in the big picture here, of course, is that line between what a course is and what coaching is, is kind of disappearing into this digital space. And I think this Google Portraits is going to be a big part of that. So if you're excited about this, you want to learn more, make sure to go to trainingsites.io. That's my personal space where I share all of this cool stuff about starting, building, and growing an education business. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel uh, for more great videos on how to just have some fun, teach some people, earn some money.